Hi there, my name is David and I'm a self-taught artist. I live in Devon and I'm doing this demo today just to show you how to play and relax and just have fun with paint. Um, I'm going to take you through a few tutorials where I will show you basic compositions as in the demo that follows you will see that I really just lightly touch on most things um, and being my first tutorial you'll find that I do say quite often um, don't be precious um, and that's the message that I really want to get through for today is you know just have fun arts about having fun it doesn't matter what colors it doesn't matter what you use be it your fingers be it a credit card or a squeegee um, I, you know, I use really cheap hardware brushes. I use whatever comes to hand and I'm not very precious over the stuff that I use at all. I do um, buy good quality paint uh, because I just think that, you know, it, it's, it's what I'm doing. I want it to last and not perish over, over years. So it kind of gives a, a sense of, of it, the longevity of the art that you're creating. Um, other than that, you know, just just have fun. That's that's what it's it's all about. And um, I hope that in some small way, I inspire you to just spend some time with your thoughts and be creative. Yeah, we all have it in us. Um, it's just a matter of practice. It, it'll look easy um, when I do it because I've been, you know, I, I paint all the time. Um, other than my day job, it's it's my huge passion and, and a big hobby for me. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This is a very quick sketch. It's a study. I often will take pieces like this, tear them up, you know, use whatever um, comes to hand and and really just give yourself you know, 10 minutes to create a landscape. You'd be amazed at, at what happens. So there's just a few things that you need to remember in terms of um, landscapes. Um, and those are... Okay, that's our canvas. If you're wanting to create depth in any field, you need to, your tone value, which is the lightness and darkness of the color. So you need to start off with a dark here, going into medium tones, and then getting lighter down to almost white on the horizon. And then the same applies for coming forward on um, the foreground. So you'd go, your lighter tones would be here, your medium tones here, and your darker tones here. And then I find to just throw it an extra step back, um, you can go um, back to a hint of medium right on the very foreground. That just tends to make it pop that little bit further back. Um, the other things are composition. So again, we know the basic rules of composition. You can have either a serpentine composition, a triangular composition, or you can have what they call wings, so some kind of darkness through here, which helps to lead the eye into wherever you want your focal point to be. Or alternatively, you can go with um, grouping, so a cluster of something here and a cluster of something here will draw your focal point to your eye to those focal points. So kind of at the back of my mind, as I said, this is intuitive painting. Um, at the back of my mind, I have this, those basic rules that I know. Um, and so we're going to now apply them. Let's get on with some paint on the canvas. Bearing in mind what we just said, we're going to start with a dark color and I am going straight in with some Payne's Gray and I am mixing my paint with not, I don't use any paint thinners or turpentine. Um, I use liquid, um, which you can saw earlier in the video. Um, 
it just as a medium to spread it. So let's just start with some dark through here. Sorry, this board that I've got it on is bumping and creating a bit of a... So we're just whacking some dark because we know that that's where we want dark to be. This is a really fun technique. Um, there's, there's no right or wrong. Um, it's about playing. I've now gone into a Prussian blue over that. I haven't cleaned my brush. All I'm doing is I'm dipping it in a little bit of liquid when I want to thin it down a bit to make it move a little bit further. And I'm just whacking that on, seeing what happens. It's about creating textures. Just liquid on the brush, no more paint. You can see it gets more opaque. Some more liquid. So with oil paints, the important thing to remember is that it's, you work from dark to light. So the paint's gray, which is a darker hue than the blue, is up here. And let's just mix a bit of the two together, make it even darker. With oil paints, bearing in mind that you are going to be going into this afterwards with lighter color. So now I'm just dipping that same dirty brush into some white and we will let's just put that white through here because we know that that's all lighter area on the sky. Not being precious at all. If something happens, it happens. We're just going to go with it because this is all, this exercise is all about being loose and trying to find something. The story will come. You just need to carry on. And don't be precious about any of your work. It's, it's... Okay, I'm going on to some sap green because we know that the Tinsdale effect, which I'll discuss in a more lengthy video, to add a little bit of sap green towards the horizon just roughly so that we can start to see um, something let's put some brown on here as well so we can start to create a story just liquid on the brush there Some more Van Dyke Brown. Bring that into here because we want to add all our darkest colors first. We can lighten this up at any stage. Just put some sap green in there. Just working this on. The other thing that I find is that if you add a little bit of refined linseed oil to a kitchen oil spray, it enables you to get a little bit more spreadability on whatever you're working on as well. Don't be precious, you see it can all just change. So we've just messed with all this horizon and you can see I'm really not fussed. We can go back in and add some more white in here. So let's work a little on creating the sky. You'll notice as well that I'm not bringing the sky right down to where I want the horizon to be. 
let's just trowel some of that on. You can see I'm really working that in. So just a little bit about me. Um, I live in Devon um, in a little hamlet called Kentersbeer and I paint in my garden shed um, which is a bit of a man cave for me. Um, and I live on a working farm and you can hear my neighbor walking past my garden shed talking on his phone. Um, well, hopefully you can't. <laughs> but let's just bring some light in here because we know that the sky is always lighter on the horizon. All right, let's just give that a rinse. So as um, paint rags, I use these biodegradable um, salon tiles. Um, I am a hairdresser in my day job. Um, so now we want to still getting back to the foreground. Let's start to add some more sap green here. Because we want, and I'm going to just on the edge of my brush use a little bit of cerulean blue in there just to cool that sap green down even more. Oh, that looks good. some foliage I think. So I've got a light green on one end of the brush and a brown on the other. Um, it is Van Gogh and it is Van Dyke brown. So just to give us a bit of depth in here. If a mark works for you don't um, repeat it too many times because repetition is rather boring to the eye in my opinion. Let's just create some story in here. Because we know it's not barren earth. And really don't be precious because you can just wipe off, as I said earlier. Right. I'm going into a bit of turquoise because Oh, look at that. That's giving us something really nice. Because why not? some shrubbery through here. Give it a bit of dark at the base. Just tapping my brush into there. Bringing it darker to the fore. Because we know that the things appear bigger in the foreground than what they do in the back. Let's just get some nice. Yeah, that's looking cool. Now I'm going to just trowel some paint on, um, just to lighten the sky up. I think it needs, let's just add some more blue, more that beautiful dark Prussian blue. It's a gorgeous color and I'm just troweling it on. clouds and the sky when you're wanting the sky to look 
like it's going up over your head when you look into into a painting and it, it gives you that appearance that you're looking in the the, the shapes at the top are bigger um, and it gets more um, condensed and busier towards the horizon where it then slows down just before that kind of white area that we were talking about right so now the fun part i have a really soft bristled brush now my brushes that i use anything um i don't take very good care of them i don't spend a lot of money on them um these are common hardware brushes um yeah just whatever you can afford and in terms of paint um sorry just you, i'm just going into this really really lightly just to kind of spread it around I make a quick look at sky because remember this is just a quick study it's bearing in mind to create textures and shapes it's getting a bit dry let's just spit some oil onto there so that's neat linseed oil When you're doing clouds, it's important to remember to take them off the page. Um, there's nothing worse than just seeing them um, just randomly, um, just in the center of a painting. Uh, for me, it, it leaves me a little bit cold. Um, I'm now just squeezing out some yellow ochre. Um, Color-wise, you'll notice that I, I am a little bit airheaded and I can very easily get sidetracked. So, you know, again, color is an expression. It doesn't have to be who says the bloody sky has to be green. You can paint it whatever color you want. Whatever color paint you happen to have at hand, hopefully I'm inspiring you to just give it a go. Let's bring in, because we know that it needs to start getting a little bit darker here. And bring in some white because that's just too much there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's blending in beautifully. We're getting another whole area through here. Look at that. So that plant foliage that I was busy with in this area here looks like it's going to be disappearing. Um, so you see, I, I really am not stressed over what I put on. It's about having the fun. Look at the amazing reactions that are happening through here now as I kind of blend those. You can take... Um, rag and remove color as well you can go in there and just whip it around or if you want use your fingers it can help to create shapes and spaces so i'm just mixing i think this is a burnt sienna yellow ochre and some white because we want to bring that through let's just give this field because that's a freshie at the moment on my daily walks in isolation I'm walking through um, loads of fields where they're busy plowing around all the area so that's quite fun see the tractors and the dust and then like that so we'll just remove it hmm 
that's looking good. Uh, you can maybe just pop some trees or something in there. And look, we need to lighten the sky up even more. So I'm going to mix some cerulean. Oops, on the wrong brush. Oh well, Just scrape it off. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep my shoulder out the shot. Right, let's go to, let's try and find a clean brush. Right, so we have a nice big clean hardware special brush. Just very lightly softening, bringing it down. become a bit like a baboon holding everything Right, now I think we need to bring some of the sky into this, so that will be our last finishing touches on this, where I will just add a little bit of grey here and there to just help tie that sky in. Right, so that is my quick, let's try and get this off without too much staining, too much, just so that you can get a better idea of what the painting looks like. There we go, we have a quick 15 minute painting done with a palette knife and limited palettes. Now we will um, certainly go into much more detail in the tutorial, in the longer tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's inspired you to maybe take a journey with me in my insaneness. I, yeah, I, I really love what I do and I hope that I could inspire you to have some quiet time with yourself and and create a masterpiece it's really easy don't be afraid worst case scenario you paint over it and so all that remains is for me to sign it thank you very much hope you'll join me soon